All right, guys, we are gonna talk about the common mistakes you might be making when you flat iron your hair. Hopefully you're making none of these, but I'm gonna go through and share a few common things I saw when I worked behind the chair and give you some tips and suggestions for how to get your smoothest, straightest hair yet. This is my hair freshly blown dry. One of the first mistakes people make is not using a heat protector on your hair, either before you blow dry or before you use a heat tool. Today we're talking flat irons. You have two options really when it comes to heat protection. You can use a cream that you can put on damp hair. Um, they also make serums and things you can put on dry hair, but my example here is a cream like this that you can put on damp hair before you blow it dry. And really that's the best option because your blow dryer has heat. So the more like health strengthening products you can put on damp hair the better because damp hair is more fragile than dry hair. Your sec second option is to use an aerosol spray that you can spray on each section before you hit it with a flat iron or curl it. Um, this one protects up to 450 degrees. Let's hope your tool doesn't have to go to that temperature. It probably doesn't. Here's the thing with heat protection though. No matter what products you put on beforehand or however many products you put on, you are still going to put heat on your hair. The products that protect from heat help. But if your hair is really fragile, um, if it's breaking and you just cannot figure out why, doesn't matter how many heat protection products you're using, it's, the heat is still gonna do some, some damage to your hair. So try and take a break from heat. In the meantime, using heat protection products will keep your hair in the best condition possible given the fact that you're using heat tools. So that's the first mistake, not using some kind of heat protection. That's a mistake people make. You have to use it. It really is the best thing for your hair. The second mistake is not sectioning. I can't tell you, let me get my part in here. I can't tell you how many times I would ask my clients when I worked behind the chair, like, okay, so how do you flat iron your hair? And they would be like, well, like this. And I thought, well, that's why you're not getting the result you want. You're just zooming over it. You have a section way too big. The heat from the plates of the flat iron is not even gonna get that middle part of your hair because your section is too wide. So dividing your hair into sections is absolutely essential, especially if you're fighting frizz, if you're fighting a wave pattern, if you're fighting curls, you have to section your hair off. So that is the second mistake, not making sections. I am just gonna divide my hair here in two sections. I'm using a duckbill clip to clip it up. If you have thick hair or if you have a curl that you're fighting, go ahead and divide it into more sections. You are better off taking the time to do a really good thorough job and get an extra day or two out of your hair than doing like a halfway job and having to wash and start over again. You're doing extra work to your hair that you don't need to do. The third mistake is not adjusting your temperature on your flat iron if you have that option. Um, this is the T3 flat iron. I've got five temperature settings here. I'm sitting on three. I use, use this brand's curling iron as well very regularly and I hover between three and two on the heat setting on the curling iron, so I'm giving this a go on three. Um, I also love the GHD one inch flat iron. It does not have a heat setting. It is a great flat iron though. Um, so when I use it, I just try and work really quickly. So I'm gonna show you how to flat iron a section of your hair. You wanna take a section that you can easily hold. It doesn't need to be paper thin, but it needs to be thin enough to where you're sure when you put the flat iron on there and pull it down, the heat is gonna penetrate that entire section of hair. You also want, when you're pulling the flat iron through, to make sure you're clamping the hair. Don't press it too hard. Clamp down on the hair and pull through smoothly. If you're not getting a really smooth glide through your hair, you may have product build up on the edge that's ripping and yanking your hair, or you may just have a flat iron that kind of has, has pulsating heat, and sometimes that can drag against the section. You want even heat coming through your iron so you're getting an even, smooth finish on your section. Even though my hair is straight, I like to start near the root area and just slide down. I'm pulling at an even pace. I'm holding the section with my hand and then dropping it out. If I want these hairs a little closer to my hairline to kind of bend in a little bit, which is usually what I prefer, I'll pull that section out. I'm gonna put the flat iron in right against the root and then do a C shape so it kind of bends into my hair a little bit or into my face a little bit. 
and then run my fingers through it and smooth it out. And I've got a nice smooth section here. So you can see the difference in how finished and smooth my ends look when I flat iron them, even though my hair is straight. So I'm gonna continue grabbing sections around my hair. Always comb out your hair before. That's another mistake that I see women make. They're just running that flat iron over sections of hair without combing it out. And if you don't comb it out beforehand, you're just gonna kind of cook the knots and tangles and bends into your hair. See how I'm pulling steady all the way down to the ends and I've got a nice flat finished shiny section. I like to comb mine out right away. I'll continue working my way around my head. What I like to do to give the back of my hair a little movement is pull these sections in the back to the side and flat iron them so they just kind of swoop on my back instead of being stick straight and being likely to flip out. So I'm putting the flat iron in. I'm still pulling it straight, but you'll notice I'm pulling it out over my left shoulder. I'm gonna slide it down. I've got a nice finish. If your flat iron is not giving you a smooth finish with one single pass through the section, it may be time for a new one. You don't need to spend your entire paycheck on one either. There are a lot of great options that have adjustable heat dials at Ulta, at Sephora, um, that you can find for a really good price, under 100 for sure. So I'm moving slowly through this section. I only wanna go over it one time. I do not wanna keep going over and over the same section. I've got a nice smooth finish there. Back to this front area, I am going to section off the front piece of hair that I wanna to pull toward my face. I'm gonna put the flat iron in here and pull straight down. Slow and steady, and nice and straight there. And then this section, I'll go in a little closer to my root area. Also slow and steady, just pulling it down slightly closer to my face. So there's the bottom half, flat iron straight. I'm gonna let down the top half. If you have trouble uh, telling the difference between the hair you've just let out of the section and the section you've just worked with, you can use a duckbill clip and just clamp it down. Don't pull it into a ponytail. You're gonna put a crease in it and undo all of the work you just did. So just slide a duckbill clip in like this on the whole bottom section. And then when you take the clip out, you're not gonna have a crease or anything. I usually can tell what I've flat ironed and what I haven't. So I can just let it down right on top of that section. Right around the face here, I'm grabbing a vertical section and I'm gonna pull this toward my face because I like soft swoops right against my hairline. I'm gonna go in at the root area with the flat iron, pull it down. My wrist is bent a little bit so you can see I'm getting a slight turn to the section. Go through with my comb right away, comb it out. I've got a nice little bend there so I'm working my way back here. This is too wide of a section to grab with my flat iron. So I'm gonna divide it in half, comb through this. That's why you comb through. And then this is a better size for me. If your hair does not smooth as easily as mine does, the smaller sections you take the better, especially at the top part of your hair. You really don't need this section in here to be super straight if you know you're gonna wear your hair down. So it may be better to spend a little extra time if you're in a rush on the sections of hair that you're gonna see, which is that top layering right around the face. You maybe don't need to worry about the nape area very much. For volume, I'm lifting the section up instead of pulling it straight down. I'm lifting the section at the root here, I'll show you again, putting the flat iron in and I'm going up. I'm pulling the flat iron up and then I'll drop it down and I've got nice volume there at the root area. That is another trick and another mistake I see. People will just pull straight down on the iron and then their hair will feel kind of flat and lifeless. You can use the heat of that flat iron right at the root and lift straight up so you get nice extra lift. If you have used a volumizing product in your hair while it's wet, you're gonna get even a greater impact there. So I'm working on my part area here. 
because I want those nice and smooth, I've divided them into even smaller sections. The flat iron's going in right at the root, going up. I'm just going over the ends one time, and I'm using my fingers just to rake through here. But this left, my left side is done. Moving on to the back, just grabbing sort of the crown area here, combing up, making sure I'm all the way combed through. Might be out of frame for this shot. Putting the flat iron in at my root, pulling it up, and smoothing through one single time. I've reached the front part of my hairline. I like this side, this is my right side, to kind of bend and frame my face. So I'm combing this section forward. It's not technically a bang, but it's sort of my shorter face frame on this side. I'm combing this section all the way forward. I'm gonna put the flat iron in at the root and pull it down. And while it is still hot, comb it to the side. And that way I'll get a nice swoop right against my hairline so it doesn't feel like my hair is going straight back. I hope this video was helpful for you to watch. I hope you weren't making any of those mistakes and you just thought, yep, I'm doing that, I'm doing that, I'm doing that right, as you watched. Of course, if you were making those mistakes, now you know not to make them anymore so you can get a nice smooth result to your hair. You're not doing extra damage to it and you're keeping it nice and strong and healthy while you get a really smooth flat ironed look. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy a video that I've posted called the blow dry mistakes you might be making. I'll put a link to it right here on the screen. You can just click right on that box.